What's going on guys? Welcome back to your Lake Fork Guide. We're here on the scene at the Skeeter Bass Champ Run Berkeley Bass Fishing Tournament out here at Lake Fork. We're going to show you everything that went down, talk about the fish that got caught, how they got caught, give you all the good details, and even discuss what happened. We had a cheater. A cheater was caught at the Berkeley Tournament this year. We're going to figure out the details on that for you too. Y'all stay tuned. Every year in October, we have a tournament here on Lake Fork. It's kind of a unique tournament. It's called the Berkeley Tournament. And the kicker in this one is you can only use Berkeley baits or their parent company, Pure Fishing. I'm not even sure who all that is, to be honest with you. Maybe that's a question we can answer in today's video. But you can use Berkeley baits. And, you know, 10 years ago, that wasn't a whole lot. That was basically a power worm and a chicken crawl. And there wasn't a whole lot else that you would actually want to use in a tournament that I know of that Berkeley made back then. But now, man, Berkeley has a huge selection of tournaments. They got a whopper plopper bait called a chapo. They've got square bills, they got flat sided square bills, they got jerk baits, and all of these are good valid baits. They got swim baits. Man, you can kind of have a whole array and line of baits that Berkeley makes it. So it's a unique deal. Berkeley, you know, obviously sponsors this tournament, helps put it on and uses Bass Champs to host this tournament. By the way, in case you didn't know, Bass Champs is hands down the best team tournament organization that there, there is in the state of Texas. They do a great job. We're going to show you guys some of that. So y'all follow us. Let's go inside the gates here. Let's go check out what's going on at the park. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Need a 249 to take the lead. Oh, 247. That was close. Good fish. All right, catching up with some of the Berkeley anglers that I just happened to know. These guys are coming in early for the last hour. My crowds here has been on some gotcha with me. I know being here from uh, seminars. See, men's seminars, most we did those back in the day. And tell me your name one more time. Mike Payne. Mike Payne, and you were here fishing with Mr. Ryan? Yes. Awesome. Good deal. Shout out to these two guys also. They're fellow. So you know, Rob, don't come messing around in this tent. <laughs> I'm just telling you, don't come messing around. So we got some fish waiting in there. What do we got going on these bags? How big are we talking? 18, 11 pounds. Oh yeah. About a pound no. and three quarters. Pound and three quarters. Oh, yeah. That's pretty close. Sometimes them scales weigh a little heavy. You might I get hope there. So. A little lighter than that. A little lighter than that. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, just, How are we doing, Bill? Just nine pounds short of a double digit. <laughs> nine pounds short of a double digit. That's well said. Well said. Now, as far as Berkeley baits that are catching, what are we using for Berkeley baits? Ned Rig, yeah, baby general Ned Rig. Baby general Ned Rig, how about you, man? Fritz side five. Fritz side crankbait. crankbait. Oh man, Ben, he watches the channel. We like the wine. <laughs> We're winders around here. I don't know what the Ned Rig is. I, I, I wound until I couldn't wound no more. That's why I ended up with the video. You start Ned Rig. Pick up that bag. I call those the begging bait. You just pick it up, hold it, and beg for a bite. And that's what I was doing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Man, good job catching the fish. I know it can be tough out here, especially in the fall, man. Fish move so much. And you put 18,000 boats or whatever there is out there. Is it crowded out there? It's not. Not, not as bad as it was last year. Not as bad as it was last year. Well, that's good. That's good. The lake's fishing pretty big, and those fish are scattered up, up shallow all across yeah, the lake. We caught all these in this one. Yeah, they've been really shallow. They've been really shallow from what I've seen, too. So, man, appreciate you guys sharing the info. Good luck. Hope y'all all know about these two. You might have a chance. It's not like you got the best chance. We'll see. Hey, Hope y'all make it through, man. Thank you guys Good for seeing you sharing the info. Good to see y'all. Who right. better place to start the coverage of the Bass Champs run? Berkeley Bass Tournament then with the man himself, Chad Bott. How are you, man? Man, thank you so much. It's so good yeah. to see you again, brother, man. You guys do such a great job. We Thank you. We, we tout y'all all the time, man. If you're going to run, come fish a team <laughs> tournament or an amateur weekend style tournament, man, you guys do as good or better job as anybody out there. Thank you. We appreciate you offering all that. Right. Texas, Texas that opportunity. Definitely. This is a unique yeah. and Berkeley baits only. It right. kind of throws a little wrinkle. Seems like 10 years ago it was a lot bigger wrinkle than it is now. But now they kind of make everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely have changed and, and up their game on the different different baits and the different styles and all those. Because for like you said, a long time we didn't have spinner baits, we didn't have jigs and those kind of things. But now they've brought in a whole new line of things, so we've pretty much got them all covered. How many of these Berkeley? Which, which year is this of the Berkeley? This is the 18th. 18. So let's go back 10 years ago. Of those first eight years, how many of them won on a power line? A bunch. All of them. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, there was there was a few uh, there was a few swim baits in there yeah. kind of before the swim baits were a thing. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. But for the most part, I think the ten inch power worms probably won more than half of them. It was a big deal back then. It's still a big deal. It is a big deal. Y'all are seeing a lot of. It looks like y'all got a lot of fish hitting the scales. Yeah. What I've seen this weekend. 
and uh, a lot of good unders. Not a whole lot of overs, a lot of good unders. And, and we've even got one, the 287, I think you told me before we yep, started. 286, I believe. 286, yep, yep. 286 is our biggest under. One thing that's kind of cool about this tournament, man, if you win the whole thing, you get a ZX200, brand new Skeeter ZX200. Right. But if you catch that 286 and it holds up and it's the biggest under the slot fish, yep. if you don't know, folks, if you're not from Lake Fort, under 16 inches you can keep, one over 24 inches you can keep. Anything between 16 and 24 has to go back in the lake. So they give away two boats. They actually give it a ZX, what is it, one, 150. ZX150 gets given away to the biggest under right. as well. That's a really cool deal. I do got to ask you something. Let's get Definitely. some of the bad news out of the way. What's that? What happened to that over yesterday? Uh, he, uh, what, he didn't do anything as far as like illegally or cheating or anything like that. He just didn't read the rules and, and didn't realize that he could only have three fish in his live well. Oh, so no. he already had three fish in his live well. And then he caught the big one and he got so excited that he threw that in his live well and came forgot away in. And yeah, he forgot to let, and it was like a 12 inch fish and he got up here and then we, we always read the rules to them before the polygraph. And when he saw it, he was like, man, I, I, I had four fish in my live well. I didn't even think about it. I didn't realize yeah. that was a rule. So he just said, hey man, I, I messed up. And, you know, it's a bad deal, and I gave up. You know, he was in the lead for the whole deal at the time. Sure so, was. Sure so uh, was. yeah, I mean, it was just one of those things. It wasn't a. You know, he, he was disqualified for yesterday, but not today. He was still out there fishing. Today. So over the first over the slot, they got brought to the skills. Ended up being disqualified. Right now. Let's not be too harsh on the old fella, because like you said, it was pure accident. Yeah, and yeah. by the way, we've seen on the Bassmaster Elite Series guys forget to call a fit. Yeah, sure. It like, so it does happen, and it's just an honest mistake. So it wasn't anything malicious. The guy wasn't using live bait. No, no, and it wasn't like an unmeasurable fish, none of that no, stuff, because no. okay. it would have never made it to the scales right. in this case. So just wanted to clear that up, because I know all I saw on the deal, and I know all everybody else saw the public, was there was a rules violation. Right, so I wanted, yeah. I wanted to, Come straight yeah, to no, it was just one of those things, honest mistake, and it happens to the best of us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You sure can, man. So, what else does the public need to know if they want to come fish Berkeley next year? Man, just go on BassChamps.com, and uh, we've got several big bass events. We've got the Mega Bass that's coming in April. We've got the Skeeter Owners Tournament, and then we've got the Berkeley event. But then our new schedule for next year is a, is a whole new thing for us. We're doing all less events, but much, much bigger events, guaranteeing 75000 in each event, and then 20 places. Wait, wait, wait. Let's not speed past that like you didn't just say what you just said. If you're a weekend angler and you want to go, you're good on your pond or you want to go test yourself on all the lakes across Texas that Bass Champs goes to, you can fish for how much? 75 grand guaranteed. $75,000 guaranteed payout coming at the regular bet. So no more divisions, is nope. that the deal? Right, no more divisions. Six team events, we're going to Rayburn twice, uh, Fork once for a team event, Cedar Creek, and Ray Roberts, and LBJ, and uh, Marble Falls. And these are stringer, five fish stringer right. events at all these lakes, whereas these big bass hourly tournaments are single fish events, you weigh in one at a time. You can only have three in your live well, remember that? Well, on these events, yes. <laughs> so yeah. the next one for the big bass will be the mega bass next year in March, Right. Followed by the Skeeter Owners Tournament yep, then, and Berkeley. then Berkeley. So yep. that's the three y'all do on that, man. Well, Chad, thank you so yeah, much you for your bet, time. Man. I know you're busy, man, yeah, man. Thank you very really much. Really appreciate it. You guys go look up Bass Chance. Best tournament trail for the amateur angler out there. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Directly, then we'll know something's wrong. Uh-oh, it's good. It barely made it. Does that make you any more nervous? Okay. <laughs> Randy Bunch, six seconds left. All right, you need a 266 to take the lead this hour. 216 will get you in the money. The line is closed, but there are a few anglers left. Come on this direction. Jamie Ward coming up. He's already won some money today. I saw him earlier. You need a 198 to be in the money. Nope, 181. All right, how many more are left over there? Three or four? Three. Chance Woodard. I can feel the tension coming from back here. 207. All right, that'll put you in the money. Thank you. Mac Randall. Two oh two. All right, thank you. That is exactly what you needed to be in the money. Is this our last angler? Junior angler coming up. All right, Brady Torres. Come on over here, Brady. Can you see over the podium all right? All right, you got a 151. Man, we call it with Colin Carroll, my man. Come on. Get down with a get down. Pretty good day.
Not a bad day. Not a bad day. What can you tell us about the 867 that just won this event? Uh, got it this morning and was not expecting it. Come closer. Had a, had a rough day yesterday. Ty, yeah. come closer. Today, rough day yesterday? Rough day yesterday and was not expecting it. Get that this morning, but really got it. Did you catch it early in the morning? Yes, sir. Right Got off of that? Uh, 8 o'clock weigh-in. 8 o'clock weigh-in. Yeah, sure. real early. Real yes, early. Sir. Now, are you going to tell us which bait you caught it on? Oh, it was a spinner bait. Okay. It's it's a, a, uh, three eighths out spinner bait. Oh, pretty shallow probably, huh? Yes, sir. How about that? We've been talking on the channel lately about our fish have been getting real shallow. And we catch a lot of little ones up there, but them big ones are there, too. Yes, sir. My man just proved it, dude. What are you feeling right now? You, this is your new boat. Oh, no. This is yours. It's crazy. It's crazy. What did you fish in today? My grandpa's old boat. So. Your grandpa's yeah. old boat. Tell him. How old is it? 1979. Yes, sir. A little bit of an upgrade? A little bit of an upgrade. Keeping it or selling it? I don't know. We haven't got that far yet. And We're just <laughs> glad to have it. Well, man, you look like you're a little bit in shock right now. I am, a little bit. A little bit. Well, man, thank you so much for taking the time and sharing the info, dude. Congratulations. No what an awesome day. Yes, sir. Call up my buddy Tim Weaver, man. Tim's a Lake Floor Global. He fishes all these days. And he cashes a lot of checks and showing up last hour. You got you, didn't you? Two, two eighteen. Two eighteen. That's pretty good under there. Yeah, that was nice. It's uh, tough fishing. Yeah. The fishing bit better yesterday than it did today. Is that right? Yeah. They was short striking everything, but I don't know the pressure. So many people on the lake. It was, it was pretty tough fishing. I had to mix it up. I had to adjust every day. I caught that last fish. I caught a lot of fish yesterday, mm -hmm. but none of the right two pounders. Yeah. I was able to make an adjustment finally the last cast or the last hour I caught the, that two pounder. It's kind of the name of the game I hear that under the slot game anyway is just catch as many as you can and kind of hope to get the right one in this deal, you know. And that's the key to uh, these fish move weekly and they move daily. Right so now in the fall, they move more in the fall. God, they move in the fall. Yeah. I don't think the sheds, that turnover took forever. And I think the fish are still scattered, but yeah. I think they'll start moving further and further. Grouping a little bit, yeah, grouping a little bit. What out of these Berkeley baits that you had to use, what was key for you? Bottom hog. Bottom hog. Finesse, finesse fishing on it. And then I use the... That's a trick worm, if you don't know. Yeah. That's a Berkeley trick worm is what that is. And then I use the uh, jerk. Jerk. When it was close enough to a fluke. Like a fluke, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. And so that, a little Texas rig, and a little jig. That I took the Berkeley trigger crawl, put on the back of the jig, and I was trying to fish one fish. Gotcha. And I had quite a few that's in the brush piles I couldn't get out. Just a bad day today. It happens that way in fishing. Bad day, but you still made some money, too. Yeah. Thank yeah, you, brother. Appreciate you All taking right, the time. Thank you, Billy. That's kind of the story from the Berkeley tournament here at Lake Fork this year, run by Bass Champs. And got to talk to Chad, man. Such a nice guy. Not only do they run a great tournament, Chad's just a good dude, man. He takes care of the anglers. They do such a great job at that. So I want to say thank you to them. I want to say thank you to all the anglers who took time to talk to us. Hey, we got to win an angler to give us an interview, and that was like right in the heat of the moment. Literally the last way in it. I was the first one being me. I just walked up, hey, man, you want to talk to us? <laughs> so he was still kind of looked like uh, in shock a little bit, you might say. It was fair to say thank you to Tim for talking to us and, and Ben and, and Mike Rice and all the other anglers that took time to talk to us today. We really appreciate that. Uh, sounds like it's just shallow fishing. If you want to come out to the Lake Fork and fish in the near future, I think you just need to get on the bank and pick what you like to throw and go after it. Because if you, if you heard, I think it was a different bait from every single angle we talked to that did the thing. We heard spinner bait, we heard fluke, we heard you know net rig, we heard a flat sided crankbait. So all of them shallow type baits, something that imitates a shad and go up there and get after it because uh, it's pretty wide open right now. The fishing, even though we didn't weigh in a whole lot of real big fish, the overall fishing as far as getting a bite seems to be pretty good out here at Lake Fork right now. So uh, come hit it this fall. I've been thinking it looks like it's setting up for a good fall. We've been catching good fish on our trips, uh, lots of good numbers on our trips especially. Uh, so it should be a good fall period at Lake Fork. Hope this information helps you guys catch some more fish. One more big time, big thank you. Bass Champs, doing a great job. Check out the Berkeley term next year. It's kind of a fun deal. You got to use Berkeley baits. That's kind of weird, I know, because you may have your favorite bait that you can't use. It kind of irritates me a little bit when I used to think about fishing it back in the day before. I got it actually steered clear of it sometimes, but I wish I wouldn't because Bass Champs does such a good job putting the event on. So come check out the Berkeley term next year, and we'll see you guys next time right here on your Lake Fork Guide.